God Wants All People to Be Saved is the topic on our next episode of Spirit and Life. Stay tuned. Life Christian Television invites you to join us now for Spirit and Life with Pastor Charlie Alvarado. Hello and welcome to Spirit and Life. I'm your host, Charlie Alvarado, and I'm happy to be with you today. As we say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord loves us. The Lord is for us. He's with us. He'll never leave us and He'll never forsake us. And His words are spirit. His words are spirit and life. And so I hope that you'll stay tuned for the whole program and hear what the Spirit of God has to say to us by His Word and by His Spirit. Our topic is God wants all people to be saved. And there's a role that you and I play in this in helping other people to be saved. If we call upon the name of the Lord and we are forgiven and accepted by God, we're born from heaven, we have eternal life. Well, of course, that's great news. We know where we're going. We know where we're from. We're citizens of heaven. But the sad thing is that other people still don't know the Word of God, still haven't heard the message. And that's the only thing that's keeping Jesus from coming back. So you and I have to do our part. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But I want to give a big thank you to our church family, One for Life Ministries. We're located on the west side at 131 McClintock. 79932 is our zip code. And we'd love for you to join us if you're looking for a place where you can worship God, where you can be yourself and, and, and just become part of a loving, unified family. Come and give us a chance to show you what God is doing in our midst. We have ministry for children and youth. Youth and, and of course the infants, babies. We're ready to minister to your whole family. We have ministry for men and women. We have marriage ministry. And of course, we offer counseling to anybody or pastoral counseling. All you got to do is call and make an appointment. Plus, we also have a food pantry to help those in need. So we want to be a blessing to you and to your family. So come and see us. Visit us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. One for Life Ministries. Call us if you have any questions at 915-920-8301. Praise the Lord. Well, one of my favorite uh, scriptures uh, is 2 Chronicles 16, 9, where it says, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. Every day, God is looking for people that He can work through. And the ones He's looking for are the ones who are committed, those who are loyal to God, those who offer themselves daily so that God can work through them. God worked through Jesus, and that's why He said, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Well, now God works through the body of Christ who are the believers, those whose hearts are loyal to Him, those who are fully committed to serving Him. Well, we're the light of the world. We make the world a brighter place when we shine the light of God's goodness. That's right. Jesus said, let your light shine so that men can see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Jesus went everywhere doing good, and so must we if we truly are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so for me, it just boils down to us simply being a blessing everywhere we go treating people or looking at people the way God sees them through eyes of mercy, eyes of compassion, caring for their souls. You know that God loves everybody that we see, everybody that we know. Jesus died for them and he wants them to be saved. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment here. And I hope that you'll open your heart and open your mind and just surrender yourself to the will of God because God is looking for people that he can work through because he wants people to be saved. That's why Jesus came and that's why you and I are here on the earth to help others be saved. Uh, you know, a building is condemned because it's no longer safe or it's falling apart. And usually when a building is condemned, then later on it, it gets destroyed, it gets knocked down and, and possibly a new building will be built after that. Well, in the same way, God has already condemned the world. It's, 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 it's unsafe. You know that. It's just an evil place and there's so much destruction. There's so much corruption. Uh, you know, so God has already decided, well, this world is condemned. 
it's going down. Well, but God loves the world. He loves the people of the world and he wants every person to be saved from this destruction that is to come and of course have eternal life, be born from heaven. And that can only happen when they believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In Matthew chapter 9, uh, this is uh, verses 35 through 38. I'm going to read from the Amplified. It says, Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages in Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness, his words and his works reflecting his Messiahship. Verse 36, when he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion and pity for them because they were dispirited and distressed like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is indeed plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. That's what Jesus told his disciples then. And I believe he's telling you and me now, pray. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to, to send out workers into his harvest because the fields are already ripe unto harvest. They're ready to be gathered. There are millions of people all over the world who've heard the gospel. The seed of God's word has been planted in their hearts and possibly even watered so that they're ready to be gathered. And that's your role and that's my role. When I pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers, I volunteer myself and I'm volunteering you. I volunteer my church that let's go out and let's be ready to, to help other people come to Jesus just like you and I have been fortunate to call upon upon the name of the Lord and, and be saved. So this message is for believers to, to accept that role as children of God, but also as soul winners. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, um, I have verses here, verses 11 through 20. Uh, Paul writes, because we understand our, feel, our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. Notice that he says, we, we have a responsibility to God and that is to persuade others to come to God. He says, God knows we are sincere and I hope you know this too. Are we commending ourselves to you again? No, we are giving you a reason to be proud of us so you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. Well, there, that's a big part of you and me being laborers for the Lord Jesus Christ. It can never be about us. It always has to be about God and about whoever you're talking to. We must see them the way God sees them with eyes of love, mercy and compassion, wanting every person to be saved. But what we believers have to know right now is that there is a sense of urgency. You know, time is running out. We don't know when, when the end will come, but we know that it's coming. And so you and I have to be ready. Jesus said, it's going to come like a thief in the night. Well, you know, he gave us the heads up, so we should be ready and, and make every day count and take advantage of every opportunity to tell others that God loves them and that he wants to give them his kingdom. And the only way to get that is to believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and to call him Lord and to receive forgiveness of sins, to be born from heaven, to have eternal life and to be redeemed from, from the, 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 this world and to now become part of God's family. And so he says, uh, uh, it, it, he says, verse 13, if it seems we're crazy, it's to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it's for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love control, controls us. So that's where we have to be submitted to the love of God. And, and whatever we do, we must do it with love. When, when we're talking to people, it's because we love them. And it's not our love. It's God's love. God poured his, his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. So God's love is in your heart. He's given us everything we need to live a godly life. We have his spirit. We have his nature. And that's the one we have to operate in, not in our flesh. We all know how to, how to be carnal. What we have to work on is being spiritual and spiritual 
spiritually minded and truly care about the salvation of others. We can't force the gospel on people. If they don't want to hear it, let's not force it on them. But there are those who are looking for it and ready to hear what you have to say. And, and it's up to you and me to be ready to, to call them into the kingdom by praying with them and helping them uh, to call Jesus their Lord. Uh, so he says he died for everyone. Well, let me back up. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. So uh, I hope you believe that for yourself. I must believe it for myself. I've died to the old person I used to be. That's not the person in charge anymore. Now I'm submitted to God. At one time, I was not. I did what I wanted to do and it was all sinful. So, you know, but now I'm submitted to God. I'm aware of his presence. I'm convicted in my heart when either I'm thinking something or say something or do something that I know displeases the Lord. So, you know, when you're convicted in your heart, that's good news. That means God is working on you. If it doesn't bother you to do wrong, then, then something has to change here. I'd say let's let's give our hearts to God and and maybe rededicate ourselves to the Lord and let the Lord heal you and comfort you and fill you with his spirit and get you back on track. God's not done with you. He, he, he's going to or he finishes what he starts. He said the scripture says he who began a good work in us will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. So have faith today that God is still working on you. None of us are finished products yet. We're all in process. And when we see Jesus, then we'll be like him. In the meantime, we're becoming like him. We're being conformed to the image of God's dear son, which is the will of God for all his children. So he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. Now, I say this often, uh, and I, I hope, you know, if you've heard me say it, you never get tired of hearing me say that. But, you know, God, uh, in his heart and in his mind, can, decided that you and I were worth dying for when he sent Jesus. And so, because God feels that way about us, we have to f believe and feel that he is worth living for. Like Paul said, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let's make that choice. If we haven't made it already, let Jesus live. Jesus came to save souls. We're here to save souls. I hope that you'll accept that part of your life or that part of your responsibility is to help others come to know Jesus. So in verse 16, he says, we stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. We got to see each other differently. We got to see each other as people that God loves. We're not simply flesh and bones. You know, we are spirits, spirits that are born again, spirits that are born of God. And then we got to see others maybe who don't know Jesus with the, the eyes of love and compassion and, and see them as spirits that need God, as spirits that need to be born again so that they can have what you and I have eternal life, inherit the kingdom of heaven, inherit uh, the new earth that God is going to make. So, uh, you, you know, that's how we need to see people and no longer have a worldly perspective. We must have a heavenly perspective and value the people around us the way God values them. So he says, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person the old life is gone. The a new life has begun. And verse 18 says, And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. I'm going to repeat that. God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And that was verse 18. All right. So you and I have the task of reconciling people to God. So let's not run away from that. Let's not put that only on the pastors and all the, those who are in the fivefold ministry. Let's, let's take that responsibility for ourselves that you are appointed by God to be a soul winner, to help others come to Christ. Verse 19, 
For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. God loves you. God wants you in his kingdom. God wants to adopt you. God wants to, to give you uh, his, his inheritance or, or, or share the inheritance that belongs to Jesus. God wants you to have everything he has. But the only way to get that is to believe that Jesus is the Son of God that he died on the cross for your sins, that God raised him from the dead, and you must call him Lord. We'll get that to that in a, in a minute. So, so we are Christ's ambassadors. That's right. We're representatives of the Lord Jesus. We're kingdom people, kingdom of heaven people. We're not of this world, and so we're not to take on the nature or the characteristics of this world. We've got to stop thinking like worldly people, get caught up in the cares or concerns of this world. We've got to be thinking about kingdom business. God, what do you want me to do today? There's no promise of tomorrow for anyone. We only have now to do whatever God wants us to do. So that's how we live this life, one day at a time, minute by minute, moment by moment, but always mindful of the presence of God and that there's certain things that God wants us to do in every moment. So we give ourselves to God. And when it comes to interacting with others, we must do it with the love of God and our love must be sincere. So we're Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. You see, it's God working in us. It's His love that, that must be expressed. We of ourselves cannot generate the love that the world needs. The world needs God's love. But the good news is that God's love has been poured into you, into your heart by the Holy Spirit. So let us release the love of God. Let us forgive whoever we need to forgive. And if we need forgiveness, let's ask for God to forgive us and cleanse us and wash us of all unrighteousness so that we can be vessels fit for the master's use so that we can speak words of love uh, without any uh, inhibition, just to speak the love of God and, and let people know God loves them and, and that wants, he wants to have a relationship with them and he wants them to be part of his kingdom. Second Timothy chapter 4 Verse 1, uh, Paul writes, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. In other words, be gentle. Preach the word of God at all times. You know, whether it seems favorable or not, Tell people that God loves them. Tell people that he, that he wants them in his kingdom and that they can become part of his kingdom by believing in, their, in his son, Jesus. And if you have to correct, do it with patience and with the spirit of love. He says, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Well, I think that time is now. I mean, I see it. People would rather listen to something else, would rather not have any part of God or they, they don't, you know, just even the name of Jesus upsets them. They don't want to hear this preaching or this teaching. It says here, they will reject the truth and chase after Myths. And a lot of people are doing that now. Verse 5 says, But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. You have been given the ministry of reconciliation, so do what the Word of God is telling us. Let us do this. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. The Word of God tells us that <clears throat> let him who ministers minister with the ability that God has given and let him who speaks speak 
as the oracles of God. Well, let's give ourselves to that, Lord. Help me to just flow with your Holy Spirit and to use whatever uh, abilities that you have given me. And Lord, when I speak, let it be your words and not my own. That's what it all comes down to. We're God's ambassadors. So God has to be heard or God will be heard through you and me when we simply give ourselves to the Lord and be willing and genuinely care for the souls of others. That's what God wants to do for us. Second Peter chapter three, you know, again, we talk about the Savior. I'm telling you that, that God already condemned the world. It's, it's, it's done. It's going down. It will be destroyed. And so Jesus came to save us from that destruction that is to come because God loves all people. He loves everybody you know, and he loves everybody you'll see today, whether on TV or in person, God loves them. And it's not our part to judge or condemn. We need to be praying for their souls. I charged my church uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago that the next time we're tempted to, to be critical of somebody, whether they were, we're watching them on TV or in person, instead of being critical of others, let's take a time and pray for them. You see, Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. We're training our minds and our bodies to, to be Christ-like and love people. Jesus was moved with compassion because he saw the people as sheep without a shepherd. And that's what he said. That's when he said, pray that to the Lord of the harvest. He said, the fields are ready for harvest. Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send out laborers. Well, I'm praying that. And I'm praying that he'll use you and he'll use me to help other people come to Jesus. He says, uh, 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 Peter said, most importantly, uh, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming, coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command, and he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. Of course, this is talking about the days of Noah. And it says, and by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. This is the word of God. And, and I'm reading out of 2 Peter chapter 3. And he says, so he says, the Lord, uh, he says, they are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. So by the word of God, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. That means they're going to be destroyed. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. Well, God wants all people to be saved. He doesn't want people to be ungodly. He wants all people to be godly. And their only hope for mankind is to believe in Jesus Christ. Many people think that there's, there's other ways to God or there are many gods. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father, the source, the creator of heaven and earth except through me. And verse 8 says, but you must not forget this one thing, dear friends, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day. God's not caught up in time. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. I'm going to read that again. He says, he is being patient for your sake, for my sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. So that's the only thing that's holding God back right now is people being saved. God wants more people to come into this kingdom. He, has, he knows exactly how many people need to be saved. He knows exactly how much room there is in heaven. And so people have to, you know, we have to do our part to help other people come to Christ. Somebody did their part to help you and me believe. And so now we must do our part to help others to believe. We must be good examples to others, not just hearers of the word, but doers also. So, you know, he says the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. It's going down. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, 
what holy and godly lives should you live? So we know it's going down. So we, while we're on the earth, must live holy and godly lives. Why? So other people can see our example and hopefully taste and see that the Lord is good as you and I have. Verse 12 says, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. Why? Because we're preaching the gospel. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away with flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. Thank you, Lord. There's good news for you and me. You know, we're not going to stay here. We have a new heaven, a new earth that's part of our inheritance and is filled with righteousness, not with the evil and the wickedness and the death and destruction that we get to see or hear about every day. So the world is going down. We know this, but we don't want people we see, know, and love to go down. We must pray to the Lord of the harvest. They may not listen to you. Your family may not listen to you. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'll send somebody to their, to, to them, somebody that they will listen to, may even say the exact same things you do. So let's believe for that and do our best to help others. He says, so dear friends, we're, while we're waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. That's what it's all about. God is waiting for more people to be saved. When the message is heard around the world, then Christ will come. So let's not hold it back by simply living for ourselves. Uh, here in Romans chapter 10, how am I going to help somebody be saved? Well, Paul writes it in, in Romans 10 verses 9 through 15. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you're made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Well, how about we make sure our feet are beautiful because we are sharing the good news about Jesus Christ. Let us pray for people to call upon the name of the Lord, to believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead, to call Jesus the Lord of their lives so they can be saved. And, and let's, let's give ourselves to the Lord to help us. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be with my brothers and sisters. And I pray for everyone, those watching, maybe if you're not sure that you believe in Jesus, that you're not sure that you've been saved, call Jesus the Lord. Say, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe God raised him from the dead. Jesus, be my Lord. Be my Savior. Accept me as one of your children. Make me born from heaven so that I can live forever with you. For you are the way, the truth, and the life. I come to the Father in your name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a beautiful day.